Hello there and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this here video card. This is an AMD Radeon R9 290 non-X. Uh, they're just now coming out. What I'm going to be doing today is an unboxing of this particular version from Sapphire, but I'm also going to get, be giving some general overview about the R9 290 because this is a reference design from Sapphire, so a lot of what I'm talking about today will apply to all R9 290s that are currently on the market. Let's start off with a look at the retail box. Of course, this is an R9 290 from AMD. That's the GPU itself. Uh, this particular version is sold and backed up by Sapphire, so for any warranty information and that sort of thing, you will be contacting Sapphire directly. Some logos down here indicate that uh, you do have HDMI high-speed 1.8 meter cable in uh, included in the box. That's nice to have. The 290 specs include 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 512-bit interface, just like the 290X. That's very nice to have. You also get app acceleration, 4K gaming support, GCN architecture as the 7000 series as well as the R R R9 and R7 series are currently based on. And then AMD Affinity technology which has been improved uh, with the R9 series and you now do not require a display port uh, connection in order to do your uh, Affinity, which is pretty cool because not all monitors have display, display port connection. Over here on the right side, we have some more logos. So uh, first off, this is an AMD Radeon R9 290 GPU uh, built to perform with the uniquely uh, optimized GCN architecture. Uh, and I actually have some better specs for you in a slide in just a moment, so we'll move on from there. Uh, again, four gigabytes of 512-bit GDDR5 memory. Uh, you get AMD's HD 3D, so you can uh, play back of 3D games and Blu-ray 3D videos. Uh, you also have HDMI, DVI, and DisplayPort connectivity. And then uh, the AMD Catalyst uh, driver will have the AMD Catalyst software, which you can use to manage some features of the card. You also have the option to download the Sapphire Tricks software. Uh, which is operating system based software you can use to tweak and tune the card as well as monitor it and uh, do some overclocking stuff. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Inside we have another box. Inside that box we have some closed cell phone padding material to keep everything nice and protected in shipping. And then we also have some accessories down here from Sapphire. Uh, this is your HDMI cable again that's included, 1.8 meter. That's not a uh, hallmark of the 290, that's just a little bonus item that Sapphire has thrown in here. They've also provided you with a Molex to 6-pin PCI Express graphics connector. So if your power supply does uh, not have this type of connector and your power supply does have 750 watts or greater with a 150-watt 12-volt rail, or 150 amp, I should say, uh, then actually let me double-check that. Sorry about that. This was a specification on the side of the box which I neglected to mention. Power requirement, 750 watt or greater power supply with one 150 watt 8 pin PCI Express power connector and one 75 watt 6 pin PCI Express power connector. Okay, that's where I got confused. I was thinking 150 amps sounded like a bit too much for a 12 volt rail. All right, uh, but along with that uh, Molex to 6 pin, you also get one that has two Molex to an 8-pin. So as long as your power supply has enough juice, if it doesn't have those connectors, you can use the adapters. But generally speaking, it's, uh, if your power supply doesn't have those adapters, then your power supply might be getting a little bit outdated. Uh, here's your driver and installation CD. You can also download the latest drivers from AMD's website, which I recommend. You also get a Sapphire case badge in there. Here is uh, manufacturer info information for Sapphire, so you can contact them if you have any problems. Here's a graphics card quick installation guide from Sapphire that'll walk you through installation. And then here is some additional information about other Sapphire products in uh, lots of different languages. This, oh, I'm sorry, this is Sapphire product registration. Cool. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for our accessories. Next up, we have the video card itself. I mentioned at the beginning, this is a reference design graphics card. So uh, if you're looking at this one and you're thinking it looks a lot like a 290X, you would be correct. In fact, I just might happen to have a reference 290X right here. So we can take a look at these side by side and kind of get the uh, nitty gritty on what the difference is between them. All right, so there you go, guys. I'm measuring from the bracket, not the extended part of the bracket. And this is about 10 and 3 quarters. I'd say give it 11 inches of space in your computer case to make sure that this graphics card is going to fit. I know I'm measuring the 290X right here, but again, I just wanted to point out the differences between them are much more internal than they are external. So you're going to get the same uh, shrouded cooling design. Sapphire has uh, put a, a bit of bling on here with the Sapphire stickers and some 
It's a little extra, so you got a robot right there, which makes the graphics card much, much faster. But you do have uh, the other features of the 290X that you might be familiar with so far if you've been watching our videos. You do have a little switch right there. You can use that to adjust between a couple different fan profiles. There's a 40% one, and then there's also one that will let you crank it all the way up to 100%. But basically, you can set those uh, within the AMD Catalyst software as well. The shroud is an enclosed cooling design. You'll notice it's black and red in color. Um, so from this side is uh, generally the look that you'll be getting at it within you, it is in your computer case. You might also notice uh, the power requirements down there at that end. Just like the 290X, a 6-pin and an 8-pin PCI Express or PEG graphics connector. And then uh, flipping it over here, we can take a look at the fan. This is a blower style fan, so basically the air is going to be drawn in through this open section right there. It's going to be pushed across the card this way. And uh, the good thing about blower style fans is it does eject much of that air out the back of the case through the ventilation that's available right there. Around on this side, you'll notice a bit of intakes for that fan as well. So it's uh, allowing it to pull a bit of air in to push across, uh, supplying additional air as well as the uh, open area of the blower style fan. And then flipping over to the bottom here, we can see the PCB itself on the card is black, which is nice because it matches with a lot of computer case configurations. The uh, connectivity right here is provided by this PCI Express uh, connector that is PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. It's also backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2, so don't worry if you're running an older system. Um, however, one thing I have not tried testing yet, but I do hope to eventually, is Crossfire configurations. Well, I've tried Crossfire with the 290X, but I haven't tried Crossfire, uh, which is located right down here. Uh, I haven't tried comparing that uh, between the 290X uh, and uh, PCI Express Gen 2 and PCI Express Gen 3. I'd be curious to see what, what the difference would be. Because if you're looking at this right here, you might be saying, where is your Crossfire? That's because it's not located. You don't have any Crossfire bridges anymore. Basically, Crossfire is handled via the PCI Express Gen 3 bus, so no more need for Crossfire bridges, which is uh, why I'm pointing at a blank spot on the card, but that's where it would be if there were, and you can kind of see some remnants there, but anyway. Uh, apart from that, let's take a look at your video outs. They're located down on this end. Uh, you got a couple dual link DVI connect connection points over there. Bear in mind, those are digital only, so digital uh, DVI to uh, VGA converters need not apply. Also, HDMI right here, that's 1.4, and DisplayPort 1.2. Now I'm going to show you guys some slides. These are directly from AMD, and again, this is kind of because it's difficult to explain the difference between the 290 and 290X without a bit of visual aid. So uh, this slide is going over some of the more detailed elements of the GCN architecture and the way these GPUs are actually designed, but uh, GCN architecture, again, at the heart and soul of this GPU. You get up to 44 compute units, four geometry processors, uh, 64 pixel outputs per clock, uh, one megabyte L2 cache, uh, the 512 megabyte, uh, I'm sorry, 512 bit GDDR5 memory interface for very fast uh, and speedy and wide bandwidth between your memory and your GPU. You get AMD True Audio technology, uh, which is actually a programmable area of the GPU, which allows for some uh, really cool. Uh, uh, audio effects, um, which you can look up AMD True Audio. You can find out some more about those. Uh, you also have new AMD Crossfire. I mentioned there's no more Crossfire bridge, but they also have improved scaling. And uh, you can also connect up to six AMD Ifinity displays uh, to the single card, which is pretty cool. So not only do you not need a DisplayPort connection to do the uh, Ifinity, but you can also connect up to six cards to a single GPU, which is also pretty cool. There's 6.2 billion transistors on this GPU that's codenamed Hawaii. And uh, since we're still on GCN, we're still working with a 28 nanometer process node or 28 nanometer manufacturing process. One of the really cool things you get with uh, the AMD R9 series of GPUs is Mantle. And Mantle is basically an API or an application program interface. It's a layer in between the driver and the application. And uh, particularly for games that are designed with the Mantle API, you're going to be able to switch over to that API rather than using DirectX 11. And uh, you can get some crazy good performance in games, or at least we're to told up till now. We're expecting Battlefield 4 to enable the Mantle API sometime in December. So keep your eye out for that to see what kind of performance benefits it actually gives. And then finally, here is the direct comparison between the 290X and the 290, so the 290X on the left, 290 on the right, as you can see. You get fewer stream processors with the 290, 2,560, as opposed to about 2,800. Uh, it's slightly uh, lower clock, so up to 947 megahertz uh, on the reference design, as opposed to 1 gigahertz on the 290X, although you're probably going to be seeing third-party manufacturers overclock them beyond that. 
That does lead to a little bit less compute performance as well, 4.9 versus 5.6. Uh, you do have the same memory configuration and interface, the same me memory speed, same power connectors, same PCI Express stand standard, and the same support for both true audio as well as the APIs, including Mantle. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the new AMD R9 290 graphics card. We're looking more specifically at the Sapphire edition that we have right here. This is available on Newegg.com right now. So go ahead and click the link down in the description. While you're down there, you can go ahead and give us some feedback, maybe a like, maybe a dislike, depending on how you're feeling today. Also, uh, give me a comment, because I'd like to know how you feel about this card, what your expectations are for the future, particularly when it comes to third-party manufacturer uh, editions of this card, because we're really excited to see those. And we we have not seen any yet, but the 290 is now on store shelves or virtual store shelves if you're shopping on Newegg. But thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you all next time.